this week we're going to be looking at factorising trinomials and it's going to be for any type of trinomial and it's going to be a thing called four line factorising so I'm going to show you how to do that just now so I'm going to do this using a nine step guide and so this is the nine step guide here it's probably a good idea if you get a screenshot of this because this is the steps that we're going to work through I'm probably not going to read all through them just now because it won't make much sense until we're in the context of a question. But if you have a copy of these, it's going to make it a lot easier. So we're going to start with this example here. And we're going to factorise this. So it isn't the easiest. This one doesn't have a common factor. So we just start from the beginning of this nine step guide. So the first thing said is to multiply the coefficient of the first term and the n term together and write it down. So we've got 2 times 9, which is 18. What it says next is to write down the middle coefficient. So the middle coefficient is positive 19. Okay, so we've got positive 18 and positive 19. And what we need to do is we need to find two numbers that multiply together to give us 18 but add together to give us 19. Now that's quite easy, it's just 18 and 1. Okay. So what we do now is we rewrite the first term, which is the x squared term. So I'll write it down here. We've got 2x squared. It says next, write down the numbers with an x next to Write down the numbers that you got here with an x next to them. So the two numbers we got were 18 and 1. So it's just positive 18 and positive 1. Positive 18, positive 1. And it says with an x next to them. And then next, write down the n term. It's a bit crushed here. But we've got, um, we've got 2x squared plus 18x plus 1x plus 9. So it's just the middle term that gets broken down into these two parts. Then it says draw a line down the middle of the expression. So we just draw a line down here. And then you take the common factor out on each side. So the common factor on this side here would be 2x. So we have 2x and then we have x plus 9. And then on this side, the only common factor you've really got is 1, positive 1, because there's nothing else. And then it's x plus 9. And as you can see, these brackets match. They brackets should always match. So we just write them out as two separate brackets. We've got x plus 9 in one bracket. And then this little part here and that part go together in another bracket. So it's 2x plus 1. But don't worry if you didn't quite get that first example. We'll do some more for you. I'm going to do another example. So the next example we have is 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. So as you can see, there isn't a common factor. You multiply the coefficient of the first term, the x term, by the n term, and you write it down. So it's 4 times 9, which is just 36. And then you write down the middle coefficient, which is minus 12. And you need to find two numbers that multiply together to give you 36 and add together to give you minus 12. So I know that it's going to be minus 6 and minus 6 because if I multiply minus 6 by minus 6 I get positive 36 but when I add them I get minus 12. So the next step is to rewrite the first term so it's 4x squared. Next write down these two numbers with an x next to them. So I have minus 6x and then minus 6x. So the minus 12x has been broken down into minus 6x and minus 6x. And then next write down the n term, which is positive 9. You draw a line down the middle of the expression. So we'll draw it down here. And then we factorise each side. So what we'll do is we'll just factorise at the bottom here. So the common factor on this part would be 2x. And then inside the bracket is 2x minus 3. 
in this part here. So this is a bit tricky because it starts with a minus. We'll take out the common factor with it as a minus. So it's going to be minus 3. And then what's going to go in there is 2x minus 3. Because if we divide through by minus 3, we get 2x minus 3. And the thing that we note there, again, is the brackets are the same. We took out the common factor. And then we have to now write them out as two separate brackets. So we'll start off with the one that's the same. So I've got 2x minus 3. And then the other bracket is this part, which happens to also be 2x minus 3. And that's that one done. We'll do another example. So we've got this one this time. We've got 3x squared plus x minus 4. So again, we'll start off with the first step. You multiply the coefficient of the x squared by the n term. So you get minus 12. And then you write down the middle coefficient, which is just 1, just positive 1. And then you need to find two numbers that multiply together to give you minus 12, that add to give you 1. So I know that it's 4 and negative 3. So what we do is we rewrite the first term. So we've got 3x squared. And next, write down those two numbers with an x beside them. So I can go, I can do it either way. I might just go take away 3x plus 4x. And then we've got the minus 4 on the end. And then what we want to do is draw a line down the middle of the expression. So we'll draw the line down there. And then we factorise each side. So the common factor here would be 3x. And then in the brackets is x minus 1. The common factor here would just be positive 4. And the common fact, and then the bracket would be x minus 1. So again, because the bracket repeats, that's how we know we've done it correct. And we put them into two separate brackets now. So the one that repeats, we know, is a bracket. And then the other one, 3x plus 4, is another bracket. And that's that one done. We'll do another. So we have another example here. And we could just approach this exactly the same way. So although there isn't a term at the beginning, that's absolutely fine. Now there isn't a common factor. And then it says multiply the coefficient of x squared by the n term. So it's just really an invisible 1 there. So it's just 1 times minus 15, which is minus 15. And then the middle term that we've also to write down is 2. So you're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give you minus 15 that add to give you 2. So it's going to be minus 5 and 3. Or 5 and minus 3, I should say. <laughs> yeah. The next step is rewrite the x squared term. x squared. And then we break those down. So we break the 2x into positive 5x. And then minus 3x. And then on the end we have the minus 15. We draw the line down the middle, so we'll put it there, and we take out the common factor on each side. So the common factor here would be x, and then the bracket is x plus 5. And the common factor on that side, because it starts with a minus, would be minus 3. And then it's going to be x plus 5. And again, we know because that repeats, we know we've done it right. So we put it into brackets, we've got x plus 5. And then the part outside will be the x minus 3. Okay, I'm going to do another example. So in this one here, we've got 2x squared plus 8x minus 24. You might see that we've got a common factor here. So there's a common factor, first of all, of 2. So I'm going to take that out. So it'll be x squared plus 4x minus 12. And then we just go through it the same way. So we multiply the coefficient of x squared, which is 1, by the n term. So 1 times minus 12 would be minus 12. Okay. And then we're looking for, well, write down the other term there. 
and we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give you minus 12 that add to give you 4. So it's going to be positive 6 and minus 2. So I'm just going to focus on the part in the brackets there. So you write down the first term, then we write down plus 6x, then we write down minus 2x, because that's what our positive 4x has been broken down into. Then we've got minus 12. And then we draw the line down the middle here, and we take out a common factor on this side, which is x. So we have x plus 3. On here we have minus 2. Sorry, that one's x plus 6. It's minus 2, x plus 6. And then when we write it as two separate brackets, we've got x plus 6 and x minus 2. And then we can't forget the 2 that we took out in the beginning. So that would be that term entirely factorised. I'm going to do one more and then we're done. So this example here, so you probably recognise this as a difference of two squares. I'm actually just going to show you that you can use exactly the same way. So the coefficient of x squared is 1. So you multiply the coefficient by the n term. So 1 times minus 81 is minus 81. You write down the middle coefficient. Now, as you might be able to see there, there actually isn't a middle coefficient. So it's really just 0. And then you're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give you negative 81 that add to give you 0. So it's basically just minus 9 and 9. And then you write out the first term. And then we break the 0 down into minus 9x plus 9x. And then we write down the n term. So you don't need to do all this, I'm just showing you how it still applies. You've got the line down the middle. The common factor here would be x, and it's x minus 9. The common factor here is positive 9, and again it's x minus 9. And then we draw it as two separate brackets. We've got the one that repeats, so we've got x minus 9, and then we've got x plus 9. But you probably know that you didn't need to go through all that, but I was just showing you that in that particular example that this strategy works. So I hope this has been helpful. Please like, please subscribe, please feel free to suggest any other mass videos you like to see. I will see you in the next video. Bye.